Good evening. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Wolf's Den. How may I help? Oh, you poor thing. You're shivering all over. Please, come inside. There's plenty of warmth in here. That's better, isn't it? Good. At least now you won't catch your death. Although it appears the cold may still be affecting you. Here, allow me to take your hand, so I can lead you to a seat near the fire. There you are. Are you comfortable? I'm delighted to hear it. <laughs> Thank you for the thoughtful words. While I consider myself to be a hospitable innkeeper, I don't allow just anyone through that door. You, however, seem like you need a place for refuge. It would have been cruel of me if I had insisted that you remain outdoors, with only the frost to keep you company. I appreciate the gratitude, but it's truly no bother. Oh, goodness, where are my manners? In all my haste, I did not formally introduce myself, nor did I finish greeting you. For my discourteous actions, I offer my sincerest apologies. No apology necessary, you say? I right, thank you. Since we now have the time to have a proper conversation, shall we begin our exchange once more? Splendid. I am Cassian, and it's my pleasure to make your acquaintance. What shall I call you, dear traveler? What an enchanting name you have. The softness of its sound is pleasing to the ears, like a gentle song played on a lute. Your name also feels remarkable on the tongue, like the sweetest drops of honey. I would love nothing more than to have it fall on my lips again and again. <laughs> you truly are a sight to behold. Your eyes have widened considerably, and your cheeks have flushed to a lovely shade of rose. Oh, how I long to brush the tips of my fingers over your skin, to watch the color bloom even more. Are you all right? I'm inquiring because it appears as though you've been afflicted by something. Your inhalations have suddenly quickened, while your body has begun to tremble again. Do you require assistance from a physician? We have one in the village, and I am certain he would pay you a visit if needed. Ah, you were startled by my forwardness, and that is why you reacted so viscerally? <laughs> ah. Please forgive me. At times I can get a bit carried away. The people around here have grown accustomed to my amorous ways, but guests and travelers tend to be more appalled. Believe me, I have tried to rein in my behavior, and my attempts have been valiant, I promise you. Though I have been told that even when I am cordial, I'm still quite passionate. <laughs> what can I say? I thoroughly enjoy toying with the affections of others, as long as no one is harmed in the process. There is a reason why I have been branded as the village philanderer. It's a title that I wear with pride, rather than with shame. Yes, if you must know, I have seduced a fair number of people into my bedchamber. <laughs> you look utterly scandalized. Based on your sharp glare, you must think the worst of me. <sighs> While I may enjoy the carnal pleasures more than the average fellow, I can assure you that I treat every partner with the utmost respect and care. 
Their needs come first, always. If they feel any hesitancy or discomfort, then we cease all actions. It's as simple as that. Yes, I'm being truthful. I swear on my soul. The edges of your lips have turned upward into a smile. Despite your best efforts not to, you find me charming. <laughs> oh, but you do. Not only has your smile spread into a grin, but your eyes are now shining with mirth. Do not fret. I will not hold it against you. Even the most apathetic of individuals succumb to my charms eventually. In all seriousness, have I made you uncomfortable? Be truthful, please. No? Are you certain? <sighs> that is a relief. As I said, your comfort is my priority. No matter how desirable I find you, I will refrain from engaging in any ardent actions, unless you grant me permission. Of course. There is no need to thank me. <laughs> that was a rather large yawn. It seems that you may be ready to retire for the evening. Given the late hour and the bleak outdoor conditions, may I assume that you will be lodging here tonight? Not to worry. I have plenty of vacancies. Very few people visit Mystic Haven during this time of year, so it's dreadfully quiet around here. You're wondering about the cost? Normally, one room with all its amenities would be five shillings. However, due to the low number of guests and the urgency of your current predicament, I will only ask for two shillings. No, no, I insist. The amount I mentioned will be just fine. You are most welcome. All right. Now that we have settled this transaction, may I escort you to your room? No. Why ever not? You may roll your eyes and scoff at me, but my question was not unreasonable. It's not as though I doubt your ability to make a sound decision. It's simply that I am concerned for your well-being. You must be exhausted, so a peaceful night of rest would likely be helpful. Very well. If you would prefer to stay in this area by the fire, then I will not stop you. In fact, I would be more than happy to share the space with you and continue our conversation. Do you find these terms acceptable? Lovely. Since we will be remaining in one another's company for a while longer, may I offer you something to drink? <laughs> the eager expression on your face is answer enough. I will gladly prepare a beverage for you. The best I can do is a cup of tea, I'm afraid. I would offer something stronger, such as a cider or a mead, but sadly, I have nothing of the sort here. The tavern next door, the Drunken Goose, does. It's open for another hour, but I have it on good authority that the owner does not enjoy seeing guests this late at night. She can be rather... surly. Yes, I know her well. Too well, actually. <laughs> no, it's not what you're thinking. She and I are not associated in that manner. The owner is my younger sister, and I know better than most that she can be a handful at any time of the day. However, when it's near closing time, that is when she is at her most irritable. 
I do not fault her for it, though. There are often hordes of fools who wander in, trying to woo her into providing beverages and meals without payment. Her callous nature will not accept any of that behavior. So she sends them on their way with vicious curses and swift kicks in the rear. <laughs> yes, I do speak of her as though I am fond of her. She is a menace, certainly. But I would rather she be that than a timid, cowering damsel. At least I know that she can handle herself. <laughs> Lord save the fool who thinks that they can take advantage of her. Oh, her name? It's Griselda. Yeah. I agree that it's an unusual one. Her name means Fighting Maiden, or Dark Battle, which suits her perfectly, if you ask me. Our parents had initially considered calling her something delicate, but the moment she arrived into this world, she was already so fierce and combative. Indeed. Griselda loves a good, ferocious fight. Not too long ago, she and I were locked into the heat of battle. She is the reason why I no longer have ale, cider, mead, or wine at the inn. Apparently, I was intruding on her territory by inviting too many of her guests over. It was not exactly my fault that everyone preferred my company to hers, but she did not see it that way. As punishment, she banned me from serving anything other than tea. Why would I allow her to do such a thing? Well, if you meet her, you will understand why. She is a force to be reckoned with. No one dares to disobey her, for fear she may have their head on the next platter that's served at the tavern. I wish I were jesting, but I am not. She will not shy away from a physical altercation, if there is a need for it. Do you not see this scar on my forearm? She was the cause of that. An accident, she claimed. But I knew better. One evening, we were both in the tavern's kitchen, preparing a hearty rabbit stew for the guests. My first mistake was standing next to her while she butchered the rabbit. My second mistake was opening my mouth to boast about my latest... Uh, bedmate, who happened to be one of her dearest friends. Griselda was so irate that she accidentally allowed the knife to slip from her hands, which then sliced through my skin. Oh, come now. It's all in the past, so there's no need to make a fuss. Truthfully, as I speak of this in the present, I find it humorous. At the time, however, I could only curse before fainting at the sight of the blood. The physician rushed over to heal me, and by the next morning I felt perfectly fine. I appreciate that you are upset on my behalf. But I assure you, there was no serious harm done. Griselda and I have forgiven one another. and We agreed that I should never boast about something of that nature while she has a weapon in her hands. <laughs> yes, she is quite the character. Well, while we are on the subject of my sister in the tavern, I am reminded that you are in need of a beverage. Please excuse me for a moment. Here you are. One steaming cup of tea. I hope you will find this to your liking. That is correct. You are not alone in drinking tonight. I prepared myself a cup as well. Here's 
to us. Cheers. May I ask what your thoughts are regarding the tea? It's perfection, you say. I'm flattered. I cannot take all the credit, though. Even though I brewed it, my younger brother cultivated the herbs and spices for this particular blend. Yes, I also have a brother. Florian is the youngest of the three of us, but he is the most knowledgeable. Given his profession, his intellect and inquisitiveness have proven to be beneficial. No, he is not the physician, though he often assists the man. Florian is actually the village's apothecarist, and his services are highly sought after. I cannot even begin to count the number of individuals who have eagerly left his shop with a wrapped package in their hands. Due to his refined skills and extremely caring nature, he receives endless demands for his remedies. In fact, he frequently sees guests during the crack of dawn, or during the dead of night. I suppose it's fortunate that his living quarters are above the apothecary. Yes, I am quite fond of Florian as well. And I will happily pass your compliments to him. I'm certain he will be pleased to hear that you enjoy his tea blend. When I returned from preparing your tea, I noticed that you were examining the walls, the furniture, and the mantelpiece. Were you admiring the decor? Hmm. I thought as much. What are your thoughts? It makes my heart sore to hear you say that everything feels serene and inviting. Why do I find your words so meaningful? Well, this is my family's inn. It was established long ago by my great-grandparents, and it has been passed from generation to generation. While the inn always maintained a welcoming air, my parents made it even more so. They placed most of their attention and love here. Griselda, Florian, and I spent our youths within these walls, so we know every square meter of this place. You would like to know why the inn is now my responsibility rather than my parents? I must warn you that it is a long and woeful tale. You would still like to hear it. Very well, then. Several years ago, when I was in my late adolescence, mother and father had become gravely ill. Since Florian had always shown a keen interest in plants and herbs, he was asked to work alongside the physician to find a cure. They did everything they could, but there was no saving mother and father. Their deaths were a great tragedy for both the village and for us, their children. While Griselda and Florian mourned, I had to remain strong. From that day onward, I vowed that I would take control of the inn, which was, and still is, the pride and joy of the family. You may call it a noble action, but it truly wasn't. I did what was necessary. We all did. Without parents to support us, we each had to take on new roles. I ran the inn, of course, while Griselda began working as a cook in the tavern's kitchen. Eventually, she usurped both the 
Head cook and the barmaid. Now she does everything there. At the same time, Florian started an apprenticeship with the village's then apothecarist. Unfortunately, his mentor was elderly and perished a few months after the apprenticeship began. Without someone to teach him, Florian was at a loss for what to do. Thankfully, Griselda and I had earned enough to send him across the land to work under the most accomplished and experienced apothecarist. Three years later, he returned with much more knowledge and confidence. With his own hands, he built and opened Elixum, which is the current apothecary. Yes, that about covers it all. Now you know far more about my family than you likely wanted to. Goodness, I must have gone on for some time. Why did you not interrupt me? You were genuinely interested in the story and were eager to learn every detail? Huh. I did not expect that response, but I appreciate it nonetheless. <laughs> Ah, you are a clever one. Yes, Wolf is the family name. Hence, the Wolf's Den. <laughs> it's a bit on the nose, I agree. Alright. We have discussed my family and myself at length. It is now your turn to take over the conversation. May I ask what brings you to Mystic Haven? Are you simply passing through, on your way to a larger town? You had been traveling across deserted territory for a while, and Mystic Haven happened to be the nearest civilization, so you decided to seek shelter for the night. I understand your logic. This village is secluded, with no neighboring towns. If you had chosen to continue, you would have gone for another day or two before finding anything remotely suitable. I did sense a peculiarity when you arrived, however. You did not appear to have a horse with you, which seemed unusual to me. Have you been traveling by foot all this time? Ah, uh, you had a horse at the start of your journey but a thief recently stole it from an unattended stable. Since then, you have been on foot. Ugh, what rotten luck. No wonder you looked so wary when I first saw you. Any distance on foot would be troublesome, particularly during this season. How long have you been traveling? Two months? Whatever for? You have been searching for a place to settle, but nothing has appeared to you so far. May I ask, what caused you to suddenly leave your home? Oh, you must be jesting. Surely you would not have been banished for that. Oh, that is awful. You did not deserve to be banished, simply because your tailoring shop suffered a financial crisis. That was hardly your fault, and to think otherwise would be foolish. I, I truly am sorry for all that you have endured. Of course I am concerned on your behalf. You are... By far the loveliest and kindest person I have met in ages. Despite knowing you for such a brief amount of time, I have grown to care for you. You care for me as well? It humbles me to hear you say that. Oh, yes, I'm alright. My apologies for drifting off. I was just pondering a question to ask you. I wanted to know if Mr. Caven 
could be a place that you could call your home. I am aware that you are only familiar with the village in the dark, but come morning, you should view it in the daylight with fresh eyes. If you like what you see, would you consider staying? You would like to know why? Well, beyond my fondness for you, I believe that Mystic Haven could provide everything you may want or need. The village is small, but it has distinguished shops and areas to explore. Most importantly, the community is welcoming and friendly. You could even re-establish your business, if you had the desire. I can already see how talented you are, given what you are wearing. Yes, I mean your cloak. I have been staring at it all evening. You created it with your own hands, did you not? Hmm. I thought as much. As soon as you mentioned that you owned a tailoring shop, that is when I knew. Not only is your cloak beautiful with its crimson hue and velvety texture, but it appears sturdy enough to withstand even the harshest conditions. It's far better designed than anything I have ever witnessed. I have no doubt that someday your creations will be in high demand. Yes, I am being truthful. The villagers would cherish your talent, and above all, they would adore your wit and compassion. I mean every word, from the deepest parts of my soul. I truly believe that you could find happiness here. You will consider it? Are you absolutely certain? That is wonderful news. I'm incredibly pleased to hear you say that. <clears throat> ah. Since you are now willing to see more of Mr. Haven, I was hoping that I could escort you around tomorrow. I could show you the very best that the village has to offer. While it is true that I must attend to the other guests in the morning. I will be available as soon as that is finished. It would be a great honor to accompany you, if you will allow me. <sighs> Thank you. We will have a long day ahead, so it is vital that we rest in the meantime. I know. I share your sentiments. I have been enjoying our conversation, but it does have to end, at least for the time being. Your yawns have increased significantly, which indicates that you are in desperate need of sleep. Are you finally ready to retire? <laughs> and you just released another yawn. That answers my question, then. You may leave the teacup on the table there. And afterward, I will lead you to your room. Please, take my hand, so that I may guide you along. These halls are dimly lit, and I would rather not have you stumble and fall. Your hand feels lovely in my... A perfect fit, really. Uh, uh, oh, uh... It was nothing. I was merely muttering to myself about an unimportant matter. <clears throat> uh, are you alright? My grip on your hand is not too firm, is it? Good. Please tell me if it ever feels too firm, and I will amend it at once. Right this way, then. Here we are. Your room is just beyond this door.
If you need assistance with anything, please do not hesitate to find me. I will be just across the hall from you. You are very welcome. Before we part, I would like to say one final thing. It has been a pleasure speaking with you this evening. Thank you, truly, for allowing me to be in your company. I may have charmed you to some degree, but you have enchanted me entirely. <laughs> I am being truthful. I will always be truthful with you. Uh, you have not released my hand yet. You are correct. I have not released yours, either. May I try something? I promise it will be brief, and that no harm will befall you. You have my word. Yes. I am raising your hand to my lips. Is that all right? Good. I hope you think of me while you sleep. Good night, dear traveler. I will see you in the morning.